Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this texture occlusion effect using Alpha Masks and GIMP, which is a photo editing software similar to Photoshop, but free and open source. Links to that will be in the description down below. Basically, it cuts out a piece of the screen and allows you to expose it as just a regular camera source or apply a different effect to it than this other part of the screen here. So I have the color cycles patch, and then this is just blank. And if I tap it, it will invert and now this part of the screen just looks like a regular camera and all the color cycles is contained within this little box here. I think it's pretty cool, kind of simple and an interesting way of visually demonstrating alpha masks for people who might not be as familiar with them. So let's just jump right into it. So here we are in GIMP and the first thing you wanna do is open up a new project. By default, it's set at 1920 by 1080. We're gonna swap that over. So it's 1080 on the width and 1920 on the height, which mirrors the display of a phone or an iPad or anything like that. Next, you're gonna right click on the background and add an alpha for channel that way if we click on the erase tool we can get rid of the white and all you'll see behind it is this transparent checkerboard pattern which is exactly what we want i'm going to make this slightly larger as well now i'm going to come up here to this ellipses select tool and i'm just going to start making a few circles you can do whatever you like any type of pattern once you've made your ellipse shift e to get the erase tool and then just get rid of that circle so now we can do that again select your ellipse make another circle move it into position wherever you want shift e for the erase tool and then just get rid of it. Uh, we'll do it one more time down here, uh, maybe a little bit smaller, move it into place, make sure it's as circular as you want, and then erase. And now what I'm gonna do is select this rectangle one here. I'm gonna create a nice border frame around the edge. And then I'm actually gonna right click and I'm gonna go to this select drop down menu here and invert. You can also use shift I to invert. And now if we go back to the erase tool with shift E, then I can get rid of everything around the outside edge. So now I've created this little pattern here made of ellipses and rectangles, and I'm gonna Command, Shift, and E, which is how you export, and I'm just gonna export that to the desktop, replacing the one that's already there. So we'll get that saved to the desktop. You can also hit File, Export As, and it's the exact same process. So once we've got that, we can hide GIMP, and you'll be able to see here on my desktop now, I have this image with all of the circles and the outside edge of the rectangle fully transparent and all of the white areas still intact, which is great. So now I can close that and we can create a new project inside of Spark AR. Okay, so here we are, 2D mode, view the patch editor, make yourself a little bit of space and then take your untitled image or whatever you've named it and drag it into your assets panel. You'll see a little preview down here so you know it's looking good. And then we're gonna right click and add a rectangle. Now that will appear nested inside of a canvas. You wanna fill the width, fill the height, and add a material for that. We're gonna select our material, change the shader type from standard to flat, and then select our camera up here in the scene. Hit this plus button to extract the texture as a camera texture, which will also appear down here in your assets panel. Then come back to your material, add that camera texture under the diffuse shader properties. So now we have our original camera source projected onto this new rectangle. And what we wanna do next is check this alpha box here and add the untitled image that we've created. Again, it'll be named whatever you've named yours. And you'll be able to see it in the preview window, but not necessarily in your device. You can see we now have this outside edge here, three circles. And if I change the color from white to something more pronounced, you'll be able to see it more clearly. And you can also check this box here to invert the pattern. So I think that's pretty sweet. I'll enlarge this and you get a better sense of what's going on. We now have this blue rectangle around the edge, the three dots. And if I check this box again, or uncheck it rather, then it will invert the pattern back to the way it was in GIMP. So this is how an alpha mask works in the most basic sense. It takes the transparent areas of an image and separates them out from the opaque areas. So in this case, it's the circles and the rectangles and it looks kind of cool, I think. We can also come into our library here, patch assets. I'm gonna use the cycles patch because it's the simplest one to see. So select the color cycles patch, import that into my project, and then I'll drag that inside of the patch editor here. And if I select the material, change it back to a white color, just so that it, things look nice in the final result. Create a patch for that and get it connected up. Then it's a little bit bright, a little bit flashy. I'll slow it down, but you can immediately see it's a pretty sweet effect. I can still drop this down and invert that. So it kind of works the other way as well. And I can adjust the opacity so I can bring it down to about 50. And now you can see the person underneath because of the camera texture that we've added under the shader properties. I'll also add a random start just to make things look even nicer. 
So if we want, we can add a second texture to fill in the gaps uh, by duplicating this rectangle here. We can duplicate that. I'm gonna rename the first rectangle one, and I'll just name this one two, just for simplicity's sake. We'll do the same for this. And now rectangle two, we're gonna create a new material for that. I'll rename that two as well. Change the shader type from standard to flat. Same thing, add the camera texture here. Check this alpha box, add the image that we've created. And now if you change the color, then you'll see it fills in those gaps in between uh, where the transparent parts of the texture were. And the reason for that is because on this one, we've got this inversion box checked. So if I uncheck it, you'll see all of that outside disappears, but that's because it's sitting underneath this green texture now. So if I reinvert it, then you have all of this space being filled by material one and all of the green space being filled by material two. And if I invert this, it will appear over the top of our color cycles patch, AKA rectangle one. Now, if you take this and you drag it above, then it will just alternate. So you'll see we now have the color changing patch here, but because green is underneath it, it's created a kind of variation on the colors that you would normally see. So if I take this and I turn it back to just regular white, then you'll see it's more normal. I can change the color underneath to anything. If I change it all the way to black, then despite being 50% uh, opacity for material one, it doesn't make any difference because it's sat underneath, so you still can't see all the way through it. Uh, I can bring this down to 50%, the black one that we've made, and it has a similar effect to just kind of neutralizing it more or less. But yeah, we can reverse some of that, get it back to this sort of place. I think it's looking kind of cool. I'll make this a little bit smaller, give myself more room to breathe. Now I'm gonna double tap in here, add a screen tap, and I'm gonna control select both of these rectangles that we've made, add patches here for the visibility for one and two. And now if I connect this one up, we've got a switch. And if I connect from this one and create a knot patch, then connect that up, what this does is it reverses the signal. So what we have here is a screen tap, which goes through into a switch that once flipped goes into this visibility for rectangle one, turning it on or off, whichever state it's in, it will go to the opposite state. And it's exactly the same for this, but when this knot patch is activated, it simply reverses the signal. So this one's on by default and the screen tap turns it off, whereas this one is off by default and the screen tap will turn it on. So now if I simulate touch, then we can tap on the screen and it will alternate between both of those rectangles being visible. So like I say, this is quite a simple technique. There's not actually much to it. You can also, if you want, add uh, textures. It doesn't have to be patches and colors. So if we come here uh, and I have some in my downloads, so I've got this texture from another video. I can drag that in here. And let's say we wanna do it with the green one. I can take this back to white just to keep things simple. And then instead of the camera texture here, we can replace it with the scary grunge, <laughs> which is uh, from my previous video that I made. There's probably a link up here somewhere, but we can reduce the opacity on that to 50% or just leave it as it is. We can still invert it and it has the same kind of effect, but with this texture applied now. So yeah, this is worth playing around with. It's pretty cool. It actually can be resized as well. So if you want, you can use this to create interesting frames around the outside of your effects. You could get rid of these dots and just have it be a frame. But yeah, I'll bring this down to 50%. We can tap on the screen. And uh, if I invert this, then now we get like kind of an even weirder effect. I could bring it down even more. I think it looks cool. What do you think? But anyway, that is the entire effect. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's a little bit of a strange one, but hopefully I was able to help you visualize alpha masks if you weren't already familiar with them and just kind of go over something that you wouldn't normally see. I don't think anyway, I've never seen someone kind of explain this concept in this way. So that's why I made this video. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, share it somewhere, all that stuff that people say. My Gumroad and Patreon links are in the description if you want to support the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Hello, did you know I have a Gumroad page where I'm selling a bunch of filters? If not, check it out, link's in the description. I also have a Patreon where you can get them at a discounted rate and support the channel. Thank you!